and welcome to a new video. Today I'm here to do a book haul. So you may notice my voice is gone. I've been sick for the past few days and hopefully I will be better next time I record. But yeah, because I, I only have some limited days to film and only now do I remember that I'm actually sick and that I sound like this. So yeah, I, will, I thought I would start today with a book haul. With all the books I got during Christmas, uh, my birthday, and that I bought recently. I would also like to throw in some lovely, lovely things I got recently for Christmas. It's movies and bookish things, rela bookish related things, yeah. First book I got in November, I think, was Milkman by Anna Burns. This was the winner of the Man Booker Prize Award this year. And it's a very weird, very creepy, very interesting sounding book. She has no name and the main character is called Middle Sister and she has a secret that she's keeping and it's a very dystopian society but um, but it but but it, it's not as most dystopias nowadays sound not as dystopian as you would think uh, and I think it's set in the uh, or, or the setting is inspired in Ireland in the 60s um, the cover is beautiful. I love these colors so much and um, I can't wait to read this. I think it's gonna be mind-blowing. If my voice is really painful to hear, I'm really really sorry. Next I bought this little book which is called Women and Power Manifesto by Mary Beard. Now this came out last year. I had seen it on bookshops in London, didn't get it. I don't know why, but it's such a small little book and it just, it speaks to me so much and I'm so interested in this kind of uh, writing and also I'm very into feminism so it makes all the sense in the world to get this book and I thought now would be the perfect time. It's beautiful, it's very short and I can't, can't wait to read it. The next book I actually got myself as well was The Miseducation of Cameron Post. This was on sale and the lovely cover by Penguin, the British, the British cover. It, this cover I think is pretty lovely with like the, the like filter he has. But also the they painted the edges with the pride flag, and this is just yes. All of the yeses, yes. Because I use web book cover uh, usually for this type of paperbacks, so it doesn't get ruined in my bag. And people will still see the colors of the pride flag when I'm using that cover. It's just, I mean, yes. Also, I'm very interested in reading this book. And also, even my dad, like, read the premise and thought, hmm, that sounds actually interesting, because usually they just tell me, stop buying books, you have enough of them. But not this time. He actually thought it was interesting. So I got it while it's still, you know, very... Well, I can still find it easily and before I can, before I watch the movie as well. So now we're going to my birthday gifts. I got two books and some book related things. So I'm going to show them to you. The first one was a historical novel, a Portuguese one by a Portuguese author. Uh, she has a few, of the, two of them I think, uh, translated into English so you can check her out if you want to. Uh, she's Isabel Stilwell and this is Dona Maria Primera, her most recent release I own all of her books because I mean every author in Portugal that decides to make a book about a Portuguese queen I buy that book because there's not a lot of them so like in England it feels like there's a lot of them but actually I own most of them and when you think that I own most of the books that there are in a Portuguese market about Portuguese queens in fiction, in terms of fiction, you, you kind of start getting worried about people's topics. That being said, I feel like this one is gonna be good. People have been saying nice things about it. I'm also just really interesting, interested in actually reading a novel about this queen, which I actually I've read a biography before. So I'm kind of I'm aware of her life and I know some of the facts, but I've read it a long, long time ago. And so I'm really interested in seeing how the, did this author fictionalize her life and so yeah I'm really very interested in this and yeah this was given to me by my godmother as well as the next book 
which is very belated purchase uh, or in this kind give but I, I should have read this a long time ago and it's The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood I haven't read this novel um, it is not mandatory in my degree to read it uh, it's not included in any of the classes I take however it's being talked about everywhere now because of this show by HBO and also I've, I've I've taken a class on dystopian literature last year in London, as you probably heard me telling you about, because I think I made a video about something like that, even though I didn't do many videos in London. But that being said, I'm really interested in reading this dystopia by a woman, which I think it's important to note, and also a dystopian that sounds, again, not very dystopian, not so extreme when you start thinking about society nowadays in some countries, or in general, to be honest. So, I guess there's a dystopian theme here with this one and Milkman. This book just, I mean, it's not recent. It's from 1985, apparently. And yet, uh, it's being republished. And, funnily enough, a dystopian book about, you know, women and about sexual violence wins the Booker Prize Award. And I think there's a point here being made, and I think it's very good that they're making it. That being said, I can't wait to read this. I think it's gonna be haunting and amazing. So that's my that's my two takes on it. Just so we are still on the birthday gifts, I also got two slightly bookish gifts. That was this diary, how do you say it? Yeah, like a diary, we call it agenda. So for me to plan the rest of my year, but this is a, this is a moleskin, but this is a Harry Potter Martyr's Map themed one and it's gorgeous, look at that, look at that. Inside the end papers have Hogwarts in them, which I mean, it's beautiful, there's not a lot of about it inside because it's, it is still a, a journal but it is very, or a diary, but it is very practical and it's beautiful um, and so I can't wait to use it in this new year that's full of new and exciting things for me and uh, so yeah, I have Harry Potter to keep me company for the rest of the year this is one of my bookish birthday gifts and also the other one was um, a new tablet, my old one was from 2013 and I don't know why, but things are not made to last nowadays. And so it was pretty dead. And the battery was all types of ruined. And so I got this new Samsung tablet. I actually asked my parents for one for a birthday. But like a cheaper one, because it was just for reading. And yet they bought me this one. And yeah, I'm using it as a e-reader pretty much. And also to watch YouTube videos when I'm at work and stuff like that. Because it's much more practical and much, yeah, then watching it either on my phone, which is very small, or on my computer, which I never take anywhere, because it's way too heavy. Uh, right now, I'm reading Jill Mansell's, I'm sorry, let me just change the lighting. Right now, I'm reading Jill Mansell's new book, I think, which is This Could Change Everything. I bought it on, uh, on Kindle. I think it was like two and something dollars. And it's been quite funny. I mean, um, I used to be a big, big, big fan of Jill Mansell. I used to read it read her books translated um, because she's very uh, she's broadly translated here in Portugal and then I found out Sophie Kinsella as you know and I am a huge fan of Sophie Kinsella but that being said um, Jill Mansell is still very funny um, she is more into like a lot of characters and a lot of stories that then come together in very surprising ways um, which is also very interesting to read but it's a lot more romantic I think which as you know I'm not against uh, Sophie Kinsella has a more has more comedy in it, uh, but there is has a smaller cast, as far as I can, as as much as I can remember it, or I can think of it. I haven't read all of her books, of course, nor have I read all of Jill Mansell's books, but I've read a lot of them, and it's funny to read it for the first time in English because it's it's being an experience, um, and it's also it makes me think that the translation was very well done because her tone is very familiar to me uh, and I haven't read it in English before and yeah, I'm enjoying it, it's a very comfortable read and I've been having a lot of stress and anxiety in the past few weeks because of a new job 
and you know end of term papers it's been keeping me company especially during Christmas I read it a lot next to the fire and it was incredible so yeah this has been very handy because I've been able to been catching up on YouTube videos and also reading uh, and getting cheap books uh, so yeah now I'm going into the books I got for Christmas so I got two books for Christmas the problem here is that my parents don't actually give me books because they literally have given up on it because they think I already own all the books there is to be owned which is weird uh, but my godmother hasn't so she actually like almost bought all of the books I had on my wish list so she spread them out in birthday and Christmas and so the first one I have is the spares the Spare Schult Affair by Alan Olinghurst. I've seen the, the hardcover edition of this, which is beautiful. But then I saw this one, and I think it's also very aesthetically pleasing. Um, I didn't think it was worth the, the spurge buying the other one, because I haven't read any of this author's work, and also because my shelves don't have the space for a hardback. I mean, I have a hardback here, but this one is very much worth the space. It it's going to take up. I've heard amazing things about this. It has been translated into Portuguese recently for Christmas, but I really did want to read it in English. I specifically has to be in English. Uh, this takes place in 1940s in Oxford University, which for me sounds just up my alley. There's a lot of social, sexual and cultural revolutions are happening in this time period and the characters in the center of it go through a lot of stuff. I don't know much about the book, to be honest. I read the first like words sounded very interesting very beautifully written also I want to kind of like dive into more general fiction even though I love and will always love and defend young adult literature um, and so I thought this one was gonna be a good try I've heard that the other previous book he published is also very good that being said I got this one I also got another book and this is the most recent book by this author I own two books of his, I haven't read any of them, or one book of his and um, that being said, this cover, I could not say no I just, I just, I put that in my, I put this book in my wish list and I just hoped someone would buy it for me so that I could justify having it and yeah, someone gave it to me and it's beautiful and it's Killing Commendatore by Haruki Murakami it's a beautiful edition guys this is the this is the hardback with its uh, dust jacket, um, but then you take off the dust jacket, which I I wouldn't. Uh, but even without the dust jacket, look look oh my god, it's beautiful. It has it like it continues, so it has numbers with colors. It's <laughs> it's such a beautiful book, and even the end papers are pretty. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, um, I mean, just having this book, like, what a magnificent work of, of publishing, like, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I want to put out in the world, like, beautifully written, amazing work by amazing authors, in beautiful covers, because that matters too, in order to attract new readers. And now I'm going into that, which you probably don't care, but I do, because that's what I'm studying for my masters. So yeah, I yeah, I'm really excited about this book. It's a beautiful book. I'm so so happy to have it. Look at it. It's beautiful. These were the final books I got, uh, like gifted to me. Now I want to show you some other things that I bought with money that was given to me. Let's go into the rest of the haul. So the next book I bought, and this is the last book I have to show you, um, it's the third book in a series that I've been reading. I've uh, I've been reading it translated into Brazilian Portuguese and now I've discovered that I probably won't be able to get the Brazilian edition of the last book because there's no way of sending it over here and I don't know when I'm gonna be back because I've just been there in June and I didn't bought the this this book there because I forgot that I needed it so now I bought it in English because it was very very cheap it was five euros and that is The Lost Star by Rick Yancey I read the second book The Infinite Sea this summer and really enjoyed it I read The Fifth Wave a long time ago was obsessed with it after I read it the the the, the cliffhanger the change and the, the plot twist and the, oh my god I was mind blown 
Uh, it's kind of one of the darkest books I've ever read. I'm not a very sci-fi, uh, post-apocalyptic fight, uh, like, very dark novel reader. And yet, this, this series is blowing me away. Can't wait to read this final novel. I'm so, so excited about it. And now I'm gonna show you just some of the DVDs I bought because I think it's gonna be interesting. First one I got was actually, it's actually a box set and this is very sad. I'm also, I wasn't a big reader of sad, dark things. And then I go and I buy Shoham, which is a nine hour documentary. It's like the essential documentary about the Holocaust. The respectful, brilliant work by Claude Lensman. Uh, it also comes with Sobibor, which is a shorter uh, documentary, uh, a documentary the normal running time of 98 minutes uh, about Sobibor, uh, about the particular day, uh, 14, uh, 14 of October 1943, uh, uh, 16 hours, so 4pm. Uh, but Shoa is 9 hours long and I'm very excited about watching it, like taking my time with it during my uh, holidays um, yeah and it's really hard to find here because you can probably guess there's not a lot of people buying it and because this is from 1985 so yeah that's also one of the problems about finding it and so I saw it and purchased it um, so yeah so now I'm gonna go through some of the DVDs I bought because I think it's gonna be interesting for you to see also what I really enjoy watching like movies so the first one was, ah, so this was a gift, it was Cards of a Galaxy Volume 2 in uh, Blu-ray 3D uh, It's actually, um, I really love collecting, like this is a theme in this haul I really want to collect all of the Marvel Universe DVDs so Then I also got Doctor Strange in a Blu-ray uh, This was also actually in sale, but uh, as you can see it has a shiny sleeve in it uh, and yeah, I also wanted to get this one in Blu-ray because I think the visuals of the movie are worth uh, paying a little extra to, to, to really appreciate them on Blu-ray. Then I also got Thor Ragnarok, which was the, the third Thor movie, which I haven't bought in DVD yet, but I, I owe all of them. And I always <laughs> own them in Blu-ray as well because I love the Thor movie, so um, if you don't know me personally, or if I haven't mentioned before, I'm obsessed with Thor. Like, it's my favorite, he's no one's favorite, but it, he is my favorite. It has nothing to do with the fact that I love Chris Hemsworth, or does it? I love that he's from outside of the world, and then, like, I find it really funny, like, the, the whole I don't understand how this world works thing. I also, I used to love the fact that they had Natalie Portman has a love interest now, She's gone from the Marvel Universe, but uh, she will always be in my heart. And that being said, Ragnarok was actually a real fun movie. Very different from the other two in the Thor storyline. Um, but really fun, real colorful. Love seeing uh, Kate Blanchett in it and also the Hulk. Real highlights for me. And of course, our darling Tom Middleton. The next one uh, that I hadn't bought yet it's a, a slightly older, so I think it came out. I think it came out in 2016. And that is Spider-Man: Homecoming. So the new one with Tom Holland. This is the DVD, not Blu-ray, because um, it's clearly not the best one in terms of like visual effects. That being said, uh, it's really funny, and again, I want to have all the DVDs of Marvel Universe. Uh, so I thought I would buy this one, which was actually on sale as well. So that was cool. And so yeah, I have the DVD as well from Spider-Man Homecoming. So then I also got a Blu-ray 3D of uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Me and my dad really love watching this movie, so this is actually the only one, or one of the few, the few ones that my dad was actually like interested in having the DVD of. We love watching Star Wars movies, and I think it's really worth the Blu-ray quality, especially in this one, the new ones, and also because I bought the first six in a box set, a Blu-ray box set. Then they, when they came out with these ones, of course I would buy uh, the Blu-rays as well. So I, here I have it, and this one is actually 3D because it was on sale, so I thought I, I better just buy the 3D. And so yeah, I'm really excited about having this one, so that one day my parents and I can just sit and watch all of them again. And now out of the fantasy world and into the real world, I bought, I mean, I was given Mamma Mia DVD, here we go again, DVD, this is the new film, I am obsessed, uh, I love I love the soundtrack, 
I love Mamiya, I love Meryl Strip, um, I love Lily James, so I love him in the cipher, so I'm I'm all over this. Oh my god, this is actually the karaoke version. I'm very excited about owning this. So next is a very darling movie and book for all of books book to community and that is Love Simon. Uh, DVD, I bought the DVD so I could watch it since I really enjoyed the book and I've read uh, Leah of the off, on the off bit as well this year. Really, I'm really looking forward to watching this movie. I haven't yet because I just didn't have the time to watch it on the cinema. So now I bought the DVD and I can watch it many many times and I'm really really looking forward to this. Especially because the casting for the parents for example is great and yeah I've heard really good things about it. I've heard that people are really pleased with this adaptation, which is great. And then I got two DVDs of movies that I've already seen. The next two movies are uh, about them because I think I wouldn't find them easily and I also want to rewatch them many many times. They are both uh, book adaptations, which is again in theme with the, my channel and, and my life basically. Um, the first one is the Guernsey uh, Literary Society uh, and Pot Literary and Potato Peel Society. I watched this on the cinema because uh, in Portugal it actually came out in theaters and not on Netflix. And I watched it on theaters with my parents. We all loved it so much. I cried, I laughed. I it just it's so lovely. So I just when I saw it there, I was like, yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it home and watch this movie many many times. I love Lily James as I previously mentioned. I mean the cast is great. Half of it was on Downton Abbey which for my mother and me who literally like binge watched that show twice. It's very very exciting. We love you know recognizing them and also it's very cute, very very beautiful and very loving movie. And yeah I really enjoyed that. And talking about movies that make me cry uh, I bought the DVD of Me Before You because I actually enjoy the adaptation, sorry. And I love Emilia Clarke and Sam Claflin. And also, every time I watch this movie, I cry. Because it reminds me of, you know, reading the book for the first time and crying at the end of the book, which never actually happens. I don't actually usually cry reading books. And Sam Claflin is now in two adaptations of t t two books that made me cry at the end because of his character. Because he was also on the Hunger Games and played that character that when things happened made me cry. So yeah, that's 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 that. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up or subscribe. What did you get for Christmas? Or the, do you love any of these things that I've shown you? If you do, please leave a comment down below. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in a new video soon. Bye!